All right, do you guys see that? I don't see anything yet. You're still sharing. Um, oh, it looks like it's loading. My bad. All right, I can see it now. Okay, cool. Um, so I created the class, initialized the answer, mm -hmm. um, and then created a guess method. Um, initialize uh, that variable and then created the um, conditionals um, based off the user guess compared to the answer. Mm -hmm. um, so high equals or low. And then the solved is um, if the user guessed equals the answer, print true, else print false. So let's see what that prints out. Oh, let me get rid of that. So for 10, uh, 10 is the answer. I guess 19, it's going to print out or return high. And for solved, it's going to be false. Sure. And if we can go, let's see, we can go below. So for nine, low faults and 10 equals and true. Awesome. Right on that. Um, that definitely accomplishes the, the, the standard initial challenge. And let's, let's see, did you find it challenging at all or was this this part very straightforward for you? Uh, I thought this was easier than um, the previous challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, probably because it doesn't utilize any inheritance, which is why I added the stretch goal at the very end. But it definitely um, meets the criteria. And do you want to take a look at what what you have so far for the second part? Because I see that you did start taking a stab at. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I don't know. Uh, this is not working. So basically, I I made the um the new class with um it being a child class of the parent guessing game. Mm -hmm. Um, initial initialized it um, with user guess and then use the super init to basically reuse this. Mm -hmm. um, I did the same thing for user guess and solved. My only concern moving forward um, is I really don't want these conditions. So I have to figure out how this is going to play with um, user input mm -hmm. moving forward. And for this, I don't know. It's expecting an indented block. I'm a little tired, so it's, this is probably something silly I'm doing. <laughs> the reason it's doing it's expecting an indented block is because it thinks it's a part of your def solved function. Okay. So you have the def solved defined with a colon, but nothing. Oh, I see. Um. So how could I? So maybe. Uh, you could put a pass for now if you want. Yeah. But uh. Thanks, Ken. That's what I was looking for. Oh, let me. Uh... Great. 
So we can do, yeah, I mean, none of this is really set up. It's not going to, because it's a string, it's not going to really understand these conditionals. So right. um, I have to figure that out moving forward. And then, and this should work similar once I kind of figure out this, I think. So. Okay. Awesome. Well, it seems like you have an idea of where to go next and you were able to accomplish the challenge. So great work. Thanks. Um, I do have a question for the, the stretch challenge, mm -hmm. um, but maybe it would give too much away, but I don't even know if it's the right way to do things. Is it when you inherit, when you create a class that inherits from another class, um are some of the sometimes when you do that do you just modify the functions within the new class yes you could modify the behavior of the function in the class you're essentially overriding that initial behavior and so when you call the function from the subclass it will behave as the function is defined in the subclass as opposed to the parent class Cool, that, that answers it. Yeah, so you could technically just write whatever you wanted after the um, super of the child class and it would override it, essentially. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a lot easier than what I thought it, it would be. Cool. Cool. Anyone else want to volunteer their answer? Uh, I could share mine. Cool. Go for it. I think it's pretty similar to what uh, Chris had. Uh, let me get rid of these. Is that a little bit better to see? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we have the class guessing game, and then it's initialized with an answer for input. And that'll be the you know the answer that has to get guessed, and then we have a method for guess uh, that takes a number, and then um, I set this. I was like messing a little bit because um, I didn't use like a loop or anything. Um, basically, you've got to type in your guess, and then it'll tell you whether it was high or low. Um, and like the, I guess the awkward thing to me is like, you kind of need to know when to, to ask if it's solved, but I mean, I guess if it's telling you it's correct, you probably know that it's safe to, to use solved. Um, but when I ran it, these were the last things. It's like, if you call solved when nothing has been, um, guessed at all, uh, then it'll tell you it's false. I guess I should probably test that, um, when we do have a number, because I created a, a variable for the last guess number, mm -hmm. um, but I just didn't quite get to everything. Um, and then similar conditions, if the number is greater than the uh, answer, it's going to tell you that it's too high. Um, and if it's less than the number, then it'll tell you that it's too low. And then uh, if it's equal to it, it'll say correct. Right on. Um, and then this, uh, I think that's where I added the guess. It was just to have what the last guess was. So um, I don't know if I actually updated it to where it, it stores it in the guest. It doesn't look like it. Oh no, I do it right here. Where it, when they call guess, it'll it'll just pass the number when reassign it. Um. And then that yeah, that's the last method is it just compares if uh if the guess was equal to the answer of the problem and returns true if it is or false if it isn't. Cool. Uh, and yeah, it looks like it still works if it you know has a value that's wrong. Awesome. Awesome, perfect. Yeah, this is um this definitely meets the criteria 
And the structure is there so that if you were going to take a stab at the stretch challenge, you would really just have to refactor some of the conditionals. Like for example, we wouldn't be comparing um, high or low values for letters, but the structure is there and it's a very good foundation for um, taking a stab at the stretch challenge. Yeah, I, I didn't get to the stretch challenge, but like looking at it, I think I know what what needs to be adjusted in here. Hopefully, I, maybe I'll post it if I solve it tomorrow in the morning or something. Right on. Cool. All right, uh, Noel, I, I, th I think you said you took a stab at, at it, right? You wanna sh walk us through? Is that the right screen? Yep, looks like it. So this is the hangman one and I imported the guessing game, which is this. Nice. I couldn't figure out how to change that to letters, so I just made a new one called guess letter. Okay. Um so um you just do like Ben uh it was a guess letter. You like A. That's correct. Do it again. Incorrect. I'm cheating. Rat. Correct. Um, do bend that solved. False. Uh bang that gets T. Then correct. Do in the word with rat. So it I put the list there and then it picks a random one using this and random. Nice. Zero to four. Is that right? Yeah. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, so the letters, if it was incorrect, oh, let's just go through it. So if you do more than one letter at a time, it says guess one letter at a time. Uh, if the letter is in the self-correct or in self-incorrect list, it says you already guessed that letter. Cool. Probably still work. Yeah, you already guessed T. Um, uh, if the letter is in the correct word, which is yeah, self dot word, then it goes through each letter in the word. And if the letter you guessed was the same as one of those letters and it prints correct, makes the last true and it puts it in the list of correct letters. Okay. And that's just so I could see if they already guessed the letter. And then if the length of the self correct list, so the number of letters in here, is equal to correct guess for the win. So that is this, which is the length of the set of the word. That way there's no doubles in the letters. Mm -hmm. Then it says you win. And if not, then you're wrong. It depends the letter, it says false, incorrect guess, yeah. Right on, right on, awesome. Can we scroll up in your guessing game code? Uh, this? Yeah. Yeah, so this is just all numbers. So I think it's still running the number game too. Mm -hmm. Where is it calling the guest letter function? Or what? Where is the guest letter function being called? What do you mean? In the terminal? Oh, you were manually doing IC, right, yeah, right. right. And, and Ben is an instance of Hangman. Okay, I see. And Hangman okay. is inheriting from Guessing Game. Awesome. Yeah. Right on. Well, great work, man. You got the challenge down. Thank you. Cool. Was that uh, fairly clear for everyone? How he uh, walked through us, how he walked us through his code? While we still have time, does anyone else want to show what they have? Um, I don't really want to show mine. Uh, it's pretty simple, but um, my I did a runner again. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like a class or anything. I kind of just honestly copied what was in the readme. Uh, and that's, for the most part, what my runner looks like, you know, just like straight code. Um, 
but it made me just think about the last one which you asked me if i could put it in a class like would you want that in a class i guess rather than just being just like a straight code file the runner itself yeah Ultimately, yes, if you were actually building out proper testing, you would mm -hmm. want it to be a class so that it would be reusable. Got it, got it, got it. Cool. Well, you, oh, go on, sorry. If you have a, a working function, uh, can't you just make it a method with within like, would there be any difference? I guess it's like you might have to add self maybe to the first parameter and maybe make the, the rest of the parameters it accepts in the init. It's are like, because you... methods are, are still like functions, right? I guess that's what I'm confusing in my head. Yeah, I use functions and methods interchangeably. They're the same to me. Yeah. Um, oh, I thought you were going to say more. Um, you said, um, uh, I was, I was trying to think of how to articulate it. Uh, I guess I don't know how to what I would call it. So, like, in the readme, uh, at the very bottom where you do like game equals guessing game mm -hmm. to kind of like initialize the version of the game or just, you know, like a game, you're going to start it. Mm -hmm. Like, would you want that in the class as well? And just like in the bottom where it's just going to get like uh not tabbed in at all completely to the side so it's just kind of underneath class or you want it like completely like actually built into a function in class um it really depends on how you're implementing it but you could call it from within the class okay if i'm understanding i didn't i didn't know if it would yeah i didn't know if it'd work right being called like kind of creating itself within the class of itself Kind of sounds like that'd be recursive, but um, I'll have to do more. Uh, I was I was up pretty late last night just watching videos because I felt like so lost after yesterday. I worked on my problem till like ten thirty. So I know you you said you don't have to stay up late, but I wasn't doing nothing else with my time, so I just sacrificed a little bit of it. Right on. That's the spirit. That's a great attitude to have. As long as you don't do it too much, you don't want to burn out. Uh, well, we have a few minutes left. Maybe I'll walk you all through uh, my implementation that I demoed earlier today. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if uh, this is too small. I'll make it a little bigger. Again, when we were running this, we call the file. What happens is I have my class guessing game defined. I have my class hangman defined. And at the very end, I'm just calling hangman. So as I call hangman, it initializes and being a subclass of guessing game, all of these are initializing as well. And because they're initializing, the code inside of them is being executed. So inside of hangman is where I have these initial print statements. We have let's play hangman, selecting word from the dictionary. It says word selected. And it selects using random a number between one and the length of the word list minus one because we're starting the index at zero. Target string is the parameter I'm using to store one of these string values in. 
And then I iterate through that string with a for loop and a range and a length of that string. And every time we're iterating, I take a letter and I instantiate the guessing game to it. So we're passing false and target string the value of the letter at the iteration that we are at to guessing game. So now up here in guessing game, we want to know if is solved is being passed in, and it is, it's being passed in as false. The letter to guess is being passed in. Again, the letter to guess is the letter at the index of the target string. Once that is initialized, we also have a third parameter here that I did not have to pass in because I'm defining a default value of an empty string. And once that's initialized, we start a while loop where while this instance of guessing game has a false value for the isSolve parameter, we are going to run the input guess method of this instance. So input guess looks like this. We take um, an input from the user, we're requesting an input, and we are assigning it to the guess variable. And if that value matches the letter to guess, which again was passed in from when we called guessing game down here, then we print you are correct. And we set the is solved Boolean to true. Else, if it's not equal, we run some checks. We want to check if the guess is greater than two. If it is, we tell the user they can't do that. The next check is we see if it has already been guessed. And that is utilizing this letters parameter that was set to an empty array. So this array will then store the letters as they are passed in by the user when an input is requested. And this is that list expanding. And the final conditional is it will let us know that it is correct if we have guessed the right letter. And we basically continue to iterate through all of the instances of guessing game until we reach the end of the string. What do y'all think? Does everyone see how by creating hangman as a subclass of guessing game, I was able to access all of guessing game's parameters and its methods. Could you share the code? Like I'm just, I mean, the Slack channel so I can just look over it later. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. So um, I'll share the code and, and I know Chad will be going over more inheritance with you guys on Saturday. So we are past time and feel free to ask any questions on Slack too. Even if um, it's not Thursday, I'll do my best to answer. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions about this code or the lesson in general. And I will see you all next week. See ya. Right Have a good one, everyone.